sacred desk at Worldwide Missionary Baptist Church. He didn't have to, but I thank God that he did let me. My pastor is not here today, but I try to always recognize my pastor. He, he's my friend, and the Bible says give honor where honor is due. And he's due all the honor that we can give him. And even then, some. I looked at this theme today, growing stronger, growing deeper, reaching higher. I called Dorothy at the church, I think it was Wednesday, and I asked her if there was a thing she told me, and believe it or not, I flipped it. Not intentionally, but I flipped it. So I have growing higher, growing deeper, and growing stronger. But it's okay because we can flip back today. Uh, I want to read two verses. Isaiah 1 and 32. The theme says, even the youth and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall faint. Amen. Church anniversary, right? I thought we would talk about a rejuvenation of the church. Charles Hatton Spurgeon, who talks about there's no such thing as a perfect church. He said that a man told him that he was looking for a perfect church. And, and Dr. Hatton told him, or Dr. Spurgeon told him, said, when you find it, don't join it. That's right. That's right. Because the moment you join it, it's not perfect anymore. From that, I glean the idea that the church serve a perfect God. Y'all don't who belong to the Lord. In, in the Hebrew, it's called the Ecclesia, which is an, an assembly called out from the world to God. It's not what it used to be, y'all. Come on, y'all. Uh, I'm not the oldest person in here today, and we can remember when the church used to fill up. Uh, I got a witness in here? We can remember when the deacons was on one side, the mothers was on another side, and somehow they could raise a fire in the church that was spread all the way to the back pew. Come on, y'all. Somebody know what I'm talking about. But it's not what it used to be. Because now that's that old timing stuff. But the songwriter said it was good enough for mama. Yeah, y'all don't hear me. Can I, can I throw something in? I, this, this, this not in what I had intended to say, but I need to say this. Something wrong when the church, 69 years, 100 years old, 80 years old, and somebody come in with a new thing. Come, come, come on, y'all. And all that grandmama and granddaddy used to do is out the door now. We change our name from church to men. Shut up, Kerry. Shut, 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 just shut up. We become full gospel. Genesis to Revelation, I'm full gospel. I, I got some witnesses in here today. 
Social media have, have more dedicated members than the body of Christ. Uh, I got a witness in here. In a world where, where social media is dominant, the church, a called out gathering of God's people, called out of their homes to a public place of worship, the ecclesia, uh, an assembly of those who have been converted, is shrinking. Somebody talk to me today. Uh, social media is not the problem. The heart of man is the problem. Uh, I got a witness in here. Scripture teaches us that the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto faith. Somebody listening to me today? Too many folks, too many folks standing in the pulpit, standing in front of God folks, rather teach anything but what thus says the Lord. You want the church to be rejuvenated, you must use the word of God. If the church is to be rejuvenated, the heart of man must be transformed. The heart of man is in dire need of rejuvenation. If man is rejuvenated, the community will be rejuvenated, and the church will be rejuvenated. I got a witness in here. Can, can I meddle for a minute? We're on the east side, right? Very rarely can you turn the TV on for the 6 o'clock news and not hear something happening on the east side, on the west side downtown Detroit. Can I tell y'all what the problem is? The church don't do what it used to do. Now, now I'm meddling with some parents in here. Parents used to make us go to church. Now children have the option. You should have been in my daddy's house. He hit that light switch on Sunday. You got up, put on your Sunday best, and climbed in the car because you knew where you were. Now they have the option. I bought tickets for the ball game. Shut up, Carrie. Uh, one may not see the church in the book of Isaiah. However, the God of Isaiah is the same God of today. And it is said that God allowed Isaiah to look through the telescope of time and to prophesize what was to come. This chapter, this 40th chapter, have two major sections. Verse 1 through 8 contain God's proclamation of forgiveness and the people's response to that forgiveness. Yeah. Verse 10 through 31 is an extended hymn of praise. Y'all don't hear me. It opens, this chapter opens with a restoration and rejuvenation of the church with power and grace, declaring God command to his messenger. That, that, that's the pastor, y'all. To comfort his people in their captivity and to reveal and expose them to glad tiding that the time of favor and deliverance was at hand. Can I tell y'all today, the time is right for God to show us favor. It's in the text. It's in the text. Read verse 1 and 2. It says, Comfort ye. Comfort ye, my people, says your God. Speak you comfortable to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquities is pardoned, for she have received of the Lord hand double for her sin. The church is in a spiritual warfare with the enemy. Satan, and some, of, and some of us have forgotten that it's a fixed fight. The victory has already been won. Uh, when, when, when we get back to the idea that the victory is already won, we won't be fighting so hard in the church to get our way. We, we, we may lose some battles. 
but the war has been the war. This chapter concludes with a comfortable application that God's infinite power and unsearchable wisdom is unruly and everlasting engaged in strengthening and comforting the church. The power of God and his unsearchable wisdom is engaged in strengthening and comforting the people of God. Listen to what he said. Has I not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth, he said he fainted not, neither is he weary. We, 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 we sometimes forget that God has not forgotten about us. And he's not weary, he's just waiting on us. There's no searching of his understanding. He gave power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increased their strength. That verse in, the, in this text, that's, wait, wait, wait a minute, Carrie. To them who have no power, he strengthened them. Yeah. Did, did, did you hear what he said? Yeah. To them that have no might, yeah. he increased strength. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all not getting that. Oh. Have no might, you have no strength, but he increased it. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all getting that? You don't have anything but God is strength, what you don't have. Yeah. Whew, good God Almighty. Some, somebody ought to hear me today. You may be going through some stuff. Calamity may have invaded your neighborhood. Your family may be dysfunctional. But the text says he gave power to the faint. And to them that have no strength, uh, he gives them strength. He increased their strength. Do I, do I have some witnesses in here? The text says that even the youth shall faint and be worried, and the young man shall utterly fall. It, it, it's often missed as those folks are weary, exhausted, feeling isolated, and, and, and in difficult circumstances. But, but we may feel weary. We might be exhausted and feel like we are isolated and even feel as if God has abandoned us. Our circumstances might not do much to help us not feel like that, but the hymn suggests that our weariness should not, uh, that our weariness does not deny that God is still God. I got a witness in here. God is the one who not only created, but he's still creating, and he remains in control. Can we just talk about three precepts today that will help us to rejuvenate the church so that it can grow stronger, grow deeper, and grow and reach higher? Can we just talk about three things real quick? Well, well the first thing that we need to talk about, we need to get back to the basics. If, if we're to rejuvenate the church, we need to get back to the basics. It's in the text. God asks a profound question. He said, who then will you liken me or shall I be equal? Y'all yeah, yeah, don't hear me. This question is not solely for worldwide, but it's, it, it, it's, it's for the whole body of Christ. The called out assembly, the people who belong to God. We, we have been so busy judging the unconverted we have forgotten to grow in stature and knowledge. We always point out our finger. Look, look at him. He ought to pull his pants up. Look at her. She just had dress. Don't y'all remember when y'all used to wear the styles? Come on, y'all. Men, men used to wear the little short pants so tight. They had no secrets. Come on, y'all. Our young ladies wore mini skirts. Some things ought to be a secret. Y'all don't hear me. And now we have, we have become pillars in the church. And we judge everybody. Remember where you come from. Give them a chance to grow up in the Lord. You have a chance to grow up. Uh, uh, 
what our forefathers did have become old fashioned. The doctrine has become watered down. And the messengers have become pimps of the pulpit. The people of God rather be entertained than taught. If we are to rejuvenate the church, the people who belong to God, the called out assembly, we must answer this profound question. The popular uh, political correct answer is there are many paths to God. Uh, but John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. The word of God will rejuvenate the people of God. I got a witness in here? Paul, Paul, Paul warns us about fables in the church. He warns us about philosophies and rhetorical questions in the church. We the people of God are to build one another up. Yeah. Rejuvenation means to make somebody look good or good. Can I suggest that rejuvenation is linked with forgiveness? And a, a rejuvenated church is more concerned with where a person is rather than where they come from. Y'all yeah, don't hear me. After all, all of us have a past. The motivation of the church ought to be do unto others as you would them unto you. The ideology is forgiving. As, forgiving as God has forgiven you. Basic Bible beliefs will rejuvenate the church and the ecclesia. Are we missing here today? That second thing I saw uh, is that God faint not. Verse 28 said, Has thou not known? Has I not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, uh, the creator of the end of the earth, he faints not, neither is weary. If we are to grow stronger, grow deeper, and, and, and reach higher, then we need to remember that God has not given up on us. And we cannot afford to give up on him. Regardless of your situation, your circumstances, even if you feel isolated from everyone, God is still God. Yeah. Romans 8, 28 says, we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Can I suggest to you today what I learned from the Apostle Paul? When things get tight and I need to be rejuvenated, I remind myself that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Somebody ought to pray with me today. You, 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 you talk about rejuvenation when we look where God has brought us from. And that God has been good to us. One cannot help but to renew themselves. And when you renew yourself, you have the tendency to make somebody else feel good and look good. I got a witness in here. If it's all about you, something is wrong. But when you can reach back and get somebody and make them look good, make them feel good, Oh, y'all don't hear me today. My, 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 my help is almost here, y'all. When the people of God are rejuvenated, the church will go, uh, uh, the church will go stronger. It will go deeper. And then it can reach higher. Uh, I saw one last thing in this text. That last verse says, wait on the Lord. They that wait on him shall renew their strength. We get in a hurry too often to do things our way. But when we wait on the Lord, God shows up right on time. 
Anybody know that he show up on time? Oh, y'all don't hear me. The text says they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The church is in good hands. It belongs to him. He said, upon this rock, I build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. Pastor Elon, there's going to be some problems. But they're not your problems. They're God's problems. You'll have a witness in here. The church belongs to the Lord. But he left it in our hand. And if we to go stronger, if we to go deeper and uh, reach higher heights, it's time to rejuvenate the church. Renew our commitment. church. Folks come to church on Sunday, but I wonder how many committed to the Lord. Y'all don't hear me. Pastor, can I tell you, you know me. As soon as a roof squares, break out in the church. Folks take their
to church. When you know that you know, it didn't stop over here. It didn't stop when it came. coming back one day. Yes. That's a promise yes. that ought to help us rejuvenate ourselves. Okay. And when we can rejuvenate ourselves, his church will rejuvenate. Yes. He's coming back, y'all. Yeah. Then we grow stronger, grow deeper, and reach higher heights. Because God lives in us. And as long as he lives in us, we can do what he told us to do. We're just going through a season right now. And God is waiting on us to show us faith. The time is right, y'all. I'm, I'm done, but let me tell you this. The time is right. The political climate is right. The social economic climate is right. God is ready to bless us, his people, because he promised to take care of us. And when you live on that promise, you can make somebody else feel good. 